Hey, what's up guys? I'm Phoenix Boona 7. <clears throat> Today I have for you an electronics project. Rare from me, I know. Um, with Bonfire Night in the UK, or Guy Fawkes Night, I believe. I don't know if uh, all the places call it Guy Fawkes Night. With Bonfire Night approaching, and uh, lots of fireworks to be setting off. Um, most important thing on people's minds is safety. And the best way to light a firework is obviously to not be, not be near it. So I have devised this little device. The beauty that she is, this is an E-Match Igniter. An E-Match is a small electronic device that can be used to um, remotely um, ignite fireworks. Uh, they use them in large displays and whatnot, so if, you're, if you've purchased some nice big fancy fireworks for, for uh, Fox Night, then uh, Bonfire Night, then uh, yeah, th this is the trick for you. It's quite a simple little device. Um, you've got two inputs here, you've got three switches total, you've got a main switch here, you've got a channel switch and you've got a you've got a, an ignition switch. Um, I'll, I'll show you show you it working just now. Basically you flip your main switch like this, like that, puts on a nice big bright armed LED. Um, this is your channel select here, sorry, the, it's actually quite a bright damn bright LED that isn't it, so I apologize. This is your channel select here, so you've got A and B, so if you want to set off two different fireworks at once, but you know, you want to do it from afar, then have one of these. Um, there are switches available that have a neutral in the middle, so that one channel was, is not on all the time, but mine is uh, selected all the time. Then you have your, your ignition. Now then, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one of these. This is a Christmas tree bulb. I'm just going to focus that a bit there. Um, these are obviously well readily available with Christmas also coming up. They're already on sale. Um, quite easy to 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 set up, and I'll show you that. Let me just turn it off the light. Um, these little legs, I don't know if you can see them. They bend backwards, and then this little plastic cap, which is the actual socket that you used to plug in, just comes away. So take that off. Spread the legs a little bit. He he, indeed, like so, so they can fit in here. That's so bright. These are um, speaker jacks for old school speakers. You, you may you may have seen them. Let me just tell you what. Let me shed some light on the situation. There we go. That's much better. Right. So uh, they're not. There's no polarity on these, so it doesn't matter which way you put a Christmas tree light in. They do technically run off 12 volts, but this is a 9 volt device. I'll show you the guts of it in a moment. Basically, to set it off, you arm your device, you select channel A, because this is on the left side, so it's channel A. I do have them labelled. And then you press your button, and it lights up. Not very well, it doesn't show up too, too great on this. Uh, I'm using, my, using an iPhone, so it's, it's not great, but it does work, so there you go. Now, let's go through the circuit diagram quickly. It's, it's really quite simple. You have a battery on one side. I chose 9 volt. Obviously, uh, if you can find a small enough 12 volt battery, then you're, you're in business. Um, but 9 volt battery works just fine. You have your big main switch over here, which is the big red one. And turning power onto this puts power into this through this LED here and straight back up to your ground, to your negative. So it completes the circuit. Nice and simple. It also allows potential energy to go through one of these channels. This is your channel selection switch, A and B. Um, so at the moment, obviously I have it set on channel A. So power comes through the big main switch, through there, through A. Um, if, you're, if you know what a, uh, an electronic circuit is, and you know how to read them, then you know that this is a loop, it's a jump over, so there's not, no, no connection here. If you see this, it means there's no connection. There's only a connection when there's a dot, like so, like there like there, so there's no connection there. It goes through this resistor and the LED, that, show, that's, that lights up for your channel A. Which is swapped to the other side, lights up channel B. Very simple stuff. Now then, the LEDs I'm using are the high power ones, so they technically run 2 volts instead of 1.5 like a normal LED does. Um, so you will have to calculate your resistance for whatever LED you use. Um, I, th I believe these were 1K resistors or 2K resistors, something like that. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, I apologise. Um, it also puts power through this section here, 
which goes to the positive of your channel A and with your E match connected across it will put uh, once you press this switch, this is your big boom switch, this is your ignition switch it will complete the circuit there very simple and it will set off your so if you match swapping to channel B will we'll set off channel B and only channel B very simple so lovely little device uh, the box you can get from many um, many electronic stores, get them online uh, I believe I got this one from Maplins but other stores are available, uh, possibly cheaper uh, you may even want to make your own box. Uh, I've made many boxes for my for my projects. So now that we've got that out of the way, if you don't have an E-match available, E-match is you can get them on the internet. Um, I will show you how to make one. Quite simply, um, I'm going to use this one. No different, no difference in bulbs really. Uh, filament in this one's a little shorter, is all. <coughs> so things you're going to need to make the E-match are quite simple. You need a bulb of some kind, a burner. Uh, this is a uh, ghost system. It's a soldering iron. You will need a lighter, which you have just there, and you will need a glass of water. Now this is murky looking water because uh, I actually put some coke in it. <laughs> Empties the remnants of a can of coke but water is preferable. So, I'll show you how to make one right now. Basically what you do is you get your bulb right, right here. Let me just, there we go. You light your burner on a lowish setting. You don't, want it, you don't want it too hot. I mean, this thing goes quite big, so I'm putting it on almost off, actually. And then you get your bulb, and what you want to do is you just want to heat the tip up just a little bit, just a smidge. Just wave in the heat, make sure it's nice and even. So you start to get a little bit of a red flame coming off the tip, and dunk it. Simple. Simple, simple, simple. And what this does is it, the temperature change from hot to cold causes the glass to fracture. What you want to do is, you want to be wearing safety glasses, safety all the time folks. Um, get yourself a little pair of pliers, and then grip the tip, and give it a bit of a pop. Pops right off, nice and safe. But, it is glass, so you want to be protecting your eyes at all times. You do not want glass in your eyes. Nasty little thing. Yeah, there's the, there's the top. The cap just popped right off. That goes in the bin. The next thing you need is a pot of crust matches. Weird thing to keep around the house, I know. <laughs> Basically, these are the non-safety strike matches, the pink ones usually in the UK. Non-safety strike matches. Just strike anyway, I believe they're called. And you want to take the heads off and grind them up so you get a nice powder. Um, if you're in America, you probably get black powder or gunpowder. Um, you know, for making your own bullets and whatnot. Um, but yes, take exceptional care when handling this. It is an explosive. You do not want to lose fingers or anything for that matter. The flash could potentially blind you, so be careful. Be very, very careful. Ideally, don't replicate what I'm doing. This is an ex is a educational video only. But everybody says that, and then everybody goes ahead and replicates it. So what you're going to do is now that you've got the top cracked off, you want to just get a few spoonfuls. I say spoon, I'm using the tip of a you know, scalpel here. Anything you want to just put a little bit of powder in there. Get that filament nice and coated, like so. Yep, jobs are good. And then pop your cap back on and put that far away from this. Goes on the other side of my table. And then what you're going to want to do is to complete the E-match is two options. The first option is get yourself some um, putty of some kind and simply putty up the end and then this will be taped to your fuse like so. You just tape it to the side and the heat will ignite the fuse. Or if you're feeling extra extra uh, <coughs> well, I don't really know. You, you could put the fuse in, just get yourself a little bit of fuse. You, you, you buy this from 
online, you get it online, it's a couple of quid a roll. You just snip a bit off, you know, say, leave an inch, pop it in there, then you take the fuse to the end. That way you get a few extra seconds out of it. I'm going to leave this one open to demonstrate it. Demonstrate it going off. And then, obviously, normally, you'll have a nice long length of wire that will go from there to your firework. Because you want to be as far away as possible. The length of wire I use is 10 meters. So, nice and far away. So you wire up your channels, your A and B. Mm. Not going to fit in there, you little bugger. The legs on this are really quite short, so we've got to be quite stingy on how much you put in it. There we go, that's connected up, I think. Like so. <coughs> For testing purposes, I don't want to burn my desk, so I'm going to put it just over a little bit of uh, just an aluminium disc here. Anyway, we'll get it right in the shot. So, this should be ready to go now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to arm it. Channel A is selected because this is the one that we're using. I'm going to. And when I press this, it will put power through the bulb, which will attempt to light. But as you crack the top off, there's now no longer any protective gas in there. I believe it's xenon for a white, for a white bulb. Don't quote me on that, though. Um, so no protective gas, so it means the, the filament will heat up and it will burn out. And that's actually the property that we want, because we want the, the match dust to combust. Or black powder, whatever you choose to use. Um, and that's exactly how the E-match works. So I'm going to press this button and it should... Egg. Boom! Pop. Boom goes the weasel. There was a minor technical difficulty just there. Well then, that is quite warm. But not hot to touch, it's just a little bit toasty one. Um, you have to make sure your connection is solid, so obviously when you're wiring these up, I either solder it or get some, you know, make sure you, you got your, a good mechanical connection. Um, some tape would, would be best. So yes, that's the, that's the science behind this little device. It's beautiful. Um, that's what I'll be using for your larger fireworks burnt a little, little bit, it's beautiful so anyway I hope you enjoyed that folks <clears throat> thank you very much for watching uh, stay tuned, there will be many more projects like this and some a lot better, ooh trust me <laughs> so stay tuned, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time